that's why I'll get out of bed to go fishing. I think I would absolutely lose the plot. everybody it's one of those times again where I know you everyone loves a live match and that's exactly what you're gonna get with this film I'm on the way to Topper Manor which is famous for huge weights of carp as we all know Zolt is in the passenger seat which is makes me feel a lot safer to be perfectly honest and we can get there a little bit quicker because he drives like well I don't know he's trying to save everything trying to be economic yes so but there is a certain day like, when you when you've got a 61 hour speed limit you're doing 25 it's not acceptable it's actually dangerous anyway so anyway we're off the top of matter but we are not fishing the carp lakes today we are fishing uh, a lake called Wadmill, which is one of topper's specimen lakes there's obviously huge carp in there but there's an, also a lot of silverfish now there's a lot of roach a lot of skimmers, some bream. I did actually come and fish a match a few weeks back um, and we had a real cold snap and the lakes everywhere in the UK was frozen. And I think we come two days after it thawed out and it was really tough in areas. Uh, the, the sort of car park end, there was a lot of roach, an odd skimmer. Um, but a lot of fish were caught by the reeds. There's some reed beds on some of the lake and there was a, a lot of the roach in the reed beds. I don't know why, but that's the way it was. Anyway, I drew in the middle of the lake. Um, I don't know right from where I was. I was sort of top weight from middle all the way down the bottom end. And the bottom end was good. When I come last year, that was a good area. Unfortunately, it just switched off. So anyway, that's what we're doing. We're gonna be fishing a live silverfish match on uh, Wad Mill. And hopefully, the weather's been really, really wet. Everything is soaked. But this morning, it's 12 degrees. Bear in mind, we're still in winter mode. Um, it's been quite warm over the last week. So fingers crossed the fishing will be good. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure what's going to happen. And that's basically what we're, uh, what we're filming today. I know you guys love it. We've had an early start because it is a midweek match. Um, yeah, so plan of action really. Not too much kit. I might set a feeder up, depending. I've not brought a waggler rod. Uh, it is most, 99% of it's going to be pole, I think. But it is sometimes. When I come last year, there was some bream in that caught on a feeder. But the last match, they just did not feed. So I'm hoping. This is going to make for a real good film. I didn't really learn a lot the last time I come. It took me quite a long time to get bites, as it did for everybody around me. Um, and yeah, I think I was like just out of the frame last match with nine pound, 21 or 22 pound won it. There was another 20, then it dropped, I think four, 14 pound was fourth. So it was quite a tough match, but all the weights were up the car park end. I think that could be completely different today. I, I'm not too sure. But it's going to be a good match. Got a good turnout. We got to put up the pegs that we're going to be on are massive. They are like specimen carp pegs where they put their bivvies. So there's no, you don't even get your feet dirty. And um, it's just a nice sort of, just hopefully a nice match with plenty of fish. But anyway, that's what you're going to get to, on this film. Uh, obviously, uh, I'll show you the draw. Mix the ground bait up. I've not mixed the ground bait up or anything yet. And uh, yeah, just on our way, still pretty dark, a little bit of rain, probably break showers most of the day. And uh, fingers crossed, we have a, a real good day's fishing. That's the most important part of it. And I won't sleep, won't sleep behind you. It was, oh. Won't fall asleep behind He's not going to fall asleep behind me. Well, if he falls asleep behind me, he won't be working for Press Innovations, will he, people? So that's up to him. But anyway, we're going to stop and have a bite to eat, and uh, next time I talk to you, it'll be uh, probably just after we've gone. Well, it's not just. 
just hungry, so we got up late. So I'm going to have my sandwich on the way down to the pub. You said to me yesterday, last night, mm -hmm. that I don't need to worry about waking up because you're going to wake me up. I did wake you up, but I woke you up a little bit too late. So that's your fault. It is my fault. I I, that's normal for me, I'm afraid. Is getting out of bed is a very technical... Always has been. But anyway, we've drawn peg free. Is it any good? Mm. I don't know, really. Um, sorry. I've got a bite to eat. Um, I'm not sure. I think it'll be all right. I think it's mild. I think there'll be quite a lot of carp about today. Um, last match, it was literally a roach match. There was very little skimmers caught. Um, obviously it's hot, but there's no rules, really. Uh, you can do what you want. So... I think I'll probably feed some worms today. I went out um, a couple of days ago, caught on worms. There's definitely some worm fish about in a minute. It's that time, you know, it's been mild. That's something you've got to think about wherever you go fishing. Um, got some dead maggots, some pinkies. Pinkies really will only come into play if I really need them. I think it'd be worms, dead maggots and casters and ground bait. Got to make your mind up about ground bait, really. I'll probably put some deep water in, which is what I've been using in when I go to a venue with some roach in it, there's quite a lot of roach in here. Well, a lot of roach, really. It was all roach match last time. Oh, what was that, Zol? That was my fault. Um, yeah, so we're on our way down to the lake. I said peg free, doesn't really mean a lot. I'm sort of just out the, I think I'm in the shallower part of the lake. And it's not, when I've been here previously, it's been a roach area rather than a skimmer, uh, a skimmer area. So, if the skimmers feed, I think I'm going to be maybe in a spot of trouble. If they don't feed, um, then it's going to be like pretty... It'd be close weight. It was really close weights every week for, for the people that are on the sort of areas with the fish. Um, so, yeah, we're going to get down there, get going. Five-hour match, I think it is. Mix some ground bait up. And uh, I'll talk you through it. I think the lake's roughly about six foot deep where I am. So probably four by 16s long, strung out rigs short. And I know from the previous match, there was a lot of fish caught in the reeds or near the reeds, like roach. The roach were in the reeds, which was really strange. Um, and yeah, last time I caught very little. For, I think I caught one roach in the first hour and a half and everybody else was blanking around me. And then eventually I started getting a few bites, but obviously that was, like I said earlier on, it was frozen over for a couple of days and it had just fallen out. So today it's completely different. Might be a little bit windy today. Depends, have a look at the color. These lakes down here are like, like a gray color. Um, they don't, you know, it, it looks like, that's one of the special lakes we're coming to now. It looks like a real nice color to be fair. There's Zolt's toilet that he's going to be using in a minute, isn't it, Zolt? Zolt is absolutely bursting for something I'm not going to mention on camera. So, uh, yeah, he's going to be diving in there any minute now. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Um, yeah, so don't, don't, don't come down the topper at the moment and go to the portaloo after Zolt's been in there. So, yeah, let's get the, get the gear out, get down to the peg. We'll have a chat when we get down to the peg. And um, I think the wind, looking at it, the wind's going to be off my back, which is quite nice, to be fair. I'm going to get in here so there's not too much mud. So, yeah, let's get down there, finish my sandwich off, and have a chat when we're at the peg. Nice. Look at that. It looks like porridge, Zolt. Nice bit of porridge. Let's get me hat on. Come Stop. On, down. What about it? What? It's a bit muddy, Zolt. Well, got to me peg, peg free. <sighs> Not where. Not exactly where I would like to have been, to be honest. I think the island's really close here. It's probably 20, 21, 22 metres. Um, there's obviously gaps between the islands. It's a lovely lake. <clears throat> um, the guy that drew here a couple of weeks ago actually hooked some carp and, yeah, he didn't catch nothing. Um, there's more colour in the lake today. So, hopefully, the fish will have a bit of a pop. I'd not... 
I am going to fish a feeder because even though I might hook an old great big unit, you never know with these skimmers and bream. They do, you know, the carp hangers especially will be putting some bait out towards the island. The bream and skimmers, if they're, you know, if they're in this area, they'll be used to it going in. So I will probably start just short on maggots and just see what's going to happen. But I will definitely put a little bit of bait out on a feeder at the start against that island. Obviously feeding me long pole line. That's my sort of gut feeling straight away with the colour, with the conditions, the temperature. Is have a go short. Like I said to you on the way down, there was a lot of fish in the reeds last time, uh, but they were to my left. The pegs to my left two weeks or three weeks ago, they were the pegs that all framed. There was a lot of roach. There's some big reed beds up there. And uh, basically they all caught on down the edge in like three and a half foot of water, I think. <clears throat> I've got a couple of reed beds. They're not the biggest reed beds in the world, but hopefully it'll hold some fish. I've seen one little roach top as I walked on, which is always a good sign that something's going to kick off. So that's what I look at. You know, that's when I get to me peg, obviously trying to find some information. I was quite lucky that I fished this match three weeks ago. It did fish rock hard in most of the area, all, all down here. I was actually pegged um, opposite, slightly to the right. And like I said, I caught nine pound and I was the top weight from over there all the way down the lake, basically up to where I am now. So that just shows you how hard it was, but it was frozen a couple of days before. <clears throat> so let's get set up. I'm going to plumb up a long line, see how, you know, I'll probably fish like a 4B12 down the, um, down the edge. 4B14's out in front, and then probably a 4B16, depending on, I'm lucky that the wind is actually nice. So if it is roach fishing, I mean, the only thing is, it's a warm wind. The fish might go with the wind, skimmers especially. Who knows? Let's get fishing. Whatever happens, we should have a day's fishing, which is what it's all about. First thing I'm going to do is mix my ground bait up. Like I said on most of the videos that I've done, I've just chucked my gear down and I'll just want to mix my ground bait up. You could have done it last night, but I prefer to do it in the morning. And uh, this is going to be my mix. I've got some deep water left over from my previous match, about just under a half a bag. I'm going to stick that in. I'm not going to measure it. A whole bag of Thatcher's Green. Again, fish meal, quite you know, strong fish meal, mixed in with a bit of natural ground bait. And then I've got a little bit of super crushed green. I'm just gonna put a little tiny bit of that in, not a lot. Because I know where I've been fishing at the moment, they love it, them skimmers. But I think this is gonna be about catching everything. Just drill this up a minute. Did you charge me? I don't know. I better hurry up just in case it does go flat, Zolt. I don't know what's going on here. There we go. So a little bit of water in it. I'm just going to fire this in, just dampen it off. That's all right for a time being. So it's just to get some water in it. And then I can sort of set up. The only thing, do I put a pellet line in? I'll have a think about that as I'm setting up, to be honest. I'm not too sure. There, wasn't many, there was very little skimmers caught last time, whether that was because of the conditions. But I honestly thought someone a few weeks ago would have caught a load of skimmers and they didn't. Um, so who knows? Who knows what, what happened every week? So let's get set up and then I'll obviously talk you through the rigs and that as we get going. Virtually ready to go now. What I'll probably do because we've got running out of time, we've literally got like seconds to go, I think. Um, feeder wise, I have set a feeder rod up to fish slightly to my right against that point. Don't really fancy it to be honest. I think um, I will put a bit of bait out there, but I'm going to start short, put some bait in, but we'll talk about it. Now, I've just set up because obviously I spoke about like worms and that been working for me the last couple of um, last week. 
Uh, so I've got a nice mix of um, well, basically the ground bait. I've got a nice, basically I can make a nice little ball of chop worm. I've put a few dead reds in it and enough ground bait just to mix it together. So lots of particles in there, as in worms. Not sure what's going to happen. Um, so I'm going to put that on both lines. I've set up a 10 meter, 13 meters, two lines. So I've got in front of me and I've also got round to me right because last time I'd come, I had to keep going round different pegs. And I think that was probably, probably a lot of it to do where I drew. But that's the sort of thing you might have to put up with in matches. Hopefully it's going to fish better today and it'll be more about fishing down the same hole, finding where the fish are. Hopefully we'll get some bites early because last time it was really, really hard. Um, I've set up down by the reeds both sides because it was, like I said, there was a lot of fish in the reeds or roach in the reeds. Um, yeah, basically I'm going to lose feed, probably casters one side, maggots, anyway, that's all in. So let's get the cup out. So I'm going to pot in just down the inside, a tiny little ball of that sort of sloppy worms because I'm going to start down the edge. So I'm going to put a bit in there like that. I'm going to take, basically just going to put a bit of that in everywhere just to give a little bit of ground bait. So that's both edges fed. Simple as that, I'll just start loose feeding over top of that. Now 10 meters, and I've always said that in my films, it's a great line. Because if there's a lot of roach about, a lot of little fish. Now I'm gonna put a slightly bigger ball in that, sort of sausage sized ball. And I'm gonna put a little bit of loose over the top. Like that, just a little bit. So that's 10 meters. It's a nice depth. It's probably like five and a half, six, it's probably six foot actually. So I'm gonna put that in there. Put me 13 meters on. And out long, I'm gonna put, just put a little bit more worm through that. A little bit more ground bait. And on that, uh, on my main line out long, I'm going to put a ball in like that. So a little bit more bait, obviously. It's having a bit of a gamble, really, that worms would work. Who knows? There you go. So a nice big sloppy ball like that. Fill that up with loose. And we, oh, there's my ring doorbell going off. So I'm going to put that, I've got my 13 metre on my dolly, but it's just nice to fish with that dolly. It's nice out there. It's the same depth, literally, as 10 metres. So I'm going to put that in. And then I'm just going to put three big pots of loose ground bait in. Like that. Because obviously the skimmers do show. And this is the sort of thing, you know, wherever venue you go, even if it fishes hard, you can like put a bit of bait in. And a bit more. Don't worry about the particles, I've put my particles in, in that ball. And that 10 meter line, I'm going to probably end up loose feeding that because we are sort of looking for roach. Obviously, rumour rumours have it. Last time, Lee, a guy I know, was on this peg, but it did fish exceptionally hard. He's caught. He took six carp, and he actually went home after about two. And that just shows you about my adrenaline ability again, doesn't it? So anyway, let's not talk about that. It's, pretty, it's quite depressing. Stop moaning, so you won't moan. Oh. So we'll get that out. And then the line, I've got exactly the same distance to my right. Because the island's quite, it's probably one of the narrowest pegs on here, I would have thought, looking at it. I'm gonna put a dose of worms in. I'm gonna go for it. Just gonna put neat worms in, like that. Where's my caster's gone? I'm going to put 
probably a couple hundred casters in. So quite a bit of bait. Mostly chop worm, neat worm. I'm not going to put any ground bait in on that line. Just a gamble, because I went somewhere down the road on Sunday, and that neat worm line was pretty damn good. Like that. So we're going to start short. We're just going to stick a couple of feeder falls out. Don't think this is going to be worth even bothering with personally, but I'm going to do it anyway. Just going to stick some ground bit out there with a few dead maggots in towards that point. Off the island a bit. It's not very deep. Not going to put a lot in. A couple of feeder falls, a few dead maggots in it. Probably get carped out on that. So just a little 11 foot SL. Let that go in. <clears throat> Strike it out. Just hope it's a fishing match, like, you know, where everybody's catching a few fish and it was a bit disappointing last time because the fish were just sort of in one spot, really. But that was, the, I, hopefully that was down to the weather. But yeah, that's sort of a throwaway line. I, I mean, whether I catch on it or not, I don't know. I don't think I will personally, but I just set it up just in case. So anyway, let's get the right rig. Uh, 4B12 Chianti. Get the elastic caught in there. It's a good start. And just start throwing a few, like I said, a few maggots one side and a few casters the other. Single red maggot. I'm going to throw a few, it's the same depth just in front of me there. So when I come the other week, it was the case of going around the Marbury bush to get bites. But anyway, let's have a quick go in here. So just chuck a few casters over the top, just a few to start with. Oh, there you go. There's a bite, which is good. Little tiny fish, admittedly, but As I said this is four B twelve strung out. A couple of uh... the nice thing is I can always, if I lose feed casters there, I can always mix a little bit of neat worm in with me casters. There's a bite, so it looks like it's going to fish better straight away, which is good news. And what's really weird, where I've been to venues recently, is you can feed casters, you can't really catch on them, with like, but a maggot on the hook has been really good. And I, and I do, a, you know, so do a lot of that sort of fishing on the river. And uh, yeah, guy's catching well to my right on a, it looks like he's fishing a whip. Another little roach. They're not they're alright. Don't mind catching them. You catch them steady, you catch 20 pounds of them. So I've plumbed up the same. So definitely gonna keep some bait going on that 10 meter line. There's a real nasty shelf. Probably on the same, there's a big carp in them reeds by the looks of it. The reeds are just knocked. There's a real steep shelf here, sort of like the depth I'm going there and it goes on, it literally goes down a cliff face. So you can't, it's not top five, it goes off and it bottoms out then to basically the same depth as 10 and 13 meters. All right, oh, smashed his head against it without keeping it. Nice fishing, three ounces, that. I'm 
And we're just going to throw a few maggots on that line there because I know it just before it drops off, it is the same depth as what I'm fishing there. So I can go three lines if I need to. Obviously, I would like to find a spot where they settle. I missed a lot of bites as well. I missed a lot of bites last time. Little weird little bites, you think that's on, but I think they're tinies. Like that. Very, very small. No good, really, but considering when he just started, he's got to put over that a little bit. Just trying to have a look around. Got Mark Harper opposite me, good angler. He looks like he's just going to start on a feeder. Doesn't look like a good skimmer area where I am, to be fair. But you never know. Tiny, isn't they? Just put a head of a worm on. So just try that a minute. Do I put a bit of worm in, obviously, with that little bit of ground bait? Things with worms, you might not miss any bites either. Okay. Two slightly better ones. That one's not as big as the last one, but there's a little bit ahead of a worm. You can leave it on, go back in. It's nice and quick, efficient. Not, for, not going to lose feed every single time. Just gonna chuck a few casters down there as well with me maggots. Right, a little bit of catch up. We're going for an hour. An hour has gone real quick. I've caught some roach, um, but I'm definitely behind here. There's a guy to my right. I think he might be fishing a whip. I can't really see him, but he's had some better quality fish, I think. I've had a few decent roach, no skimmers, but I just thought I'd try this short line in front. I, I basically. I went down the edge. They're very small fish, short. There's no quality. I thought I'd just try it. Um, my 10 meter line's been the best line. I did go out at 13, but I think 13 meters, if it fishes like it is, it's, oh, it's, you know, it's so much different to the other week. There's fish feeding and it's so obvious, do you know what I mean? That you're gonna have to probably catch short. Um, not seen a tremendous amount caught um, but there's definitely fish here. There might be a lot of little fish here at the minute on the shallower side of the water anyway. Like, you know, because I'm, I'm on top of the shelf where I'm fishing now. I thought I'd just try it. Oh, excuse me. Bit of wind. Um, I've had some better ones at 10 metres on the bottom on caster. Still putting an odd little... I've fed the 10 metre line twice since I put the initial little ball in as well, just to give you a bit of a rough guide. I uh, went out 30 metres, caught a few roach. I mean, this here, I thought it would be good, and it isn't. There's an odd fish there. But, you know, they're all right. They're just not big. Not that 10 metre. I thought I'd just try it, because I thought, well, I started chucking casters at 10 metres, obviously, from the start, like I said. And... Uh, as soon as I started getting a response on casters, I've basically turned the caster, uh, the other lines to casters as well, or the lines I can throw. And even this line. But my 10 metre line is two foot deeper than that. And I thought I'd just try it, because you never know. If them, if them roach are coming into shallow water, you can sometimes get them great big things or a better quality ones. There's obviously a lot easier fishing there. That's why I always try and feed that 10 meter line as well. It's such a good line because it's quick and sort of efficient when you're trying to catch a weight of a weight of small fish. I mean, I've had a few, I've had that one roach there. I just had another little indication, but it's not it's not what I was expecting to be honest. There's definitely a few better fish coming out. I think there's a few skimmers coming out. The guy to my right's definitely had a few bigger fish but he is in that gap. 
it's not in the narrow peg like I am. He's just had a bream then, I think. I think he's definitely fishing a whip. No, he's not, Dalt. You, you need to get, honestly, do you honestly think he's fishing a feeder? Huh? No, the guy to my right. Seriously, what are you looking at? The guy to my right, Zolt. The guy to my right. Yeah, well, what does that mean? Two to my right or one to my right? Exactly, he's not fishing a feeder. Come on, you know better than that. Don't want to loose feed too often. I'll try and keep it. Just try and keep them down on the deck if I can. So I want to give myself a chance of, of catching it. You know, if I do get skimmers coming in peg, fishing on the deck or close to the deck is going to give me that best option or the best opportunity to get one. You're going to need a couple of skimmers today, I think. Just keep a little bit of bait trundling in on all the lines really. But just trying to concentrate on that 10 metre line because that is like the line not a little reach that. Got six slip on. Beautiful elastic for this. Just had a few better ones before I, before I come off of that and I thought they were going to settle but but I obviously got it's still early and now I've gone just got to keep keep concentrating keep going. You make your own luck in this sort of fishing, you know, you keep putting them in the net and then all of a sudden you might get a bonus fish with a bit of luck. I'm definitely catching better to my right, that's for certain. A lot of these fish, they ain't, they're, they're really small. Even though it's a bite of shark. There's always an option even of throwing a little ball in rather than actually cupping it if it's that good. It's a better roach. Wait a little bit longer for that, but it's a better stamper. That's the ones you want to do a good weight. Five ounce, six ounce maybe, five ounces. That's what we're looking for then. Just looking to cast like a maggot. And just literally fishing Thumbed up normal, body bite an inch out of the water, nothing different to what I normally do. Conditions are lovely. Before Zolt started filming again, I did have a nice run there. It was literally in, settle, literally just a few seconds, under, roach. But since I've gone back out, it's still good, but it wasn't as good as the previous time I went on it but then it just re went really slow. And that's what happens at the time, the matches I fished here, they're weird fish. Probably might have been where I've been drawing, but. I am getting a bite every chuck, which is lovely fishing. Can't, uh, you can't knock it. Obviously I'd love to come back with a, with a pound skimmer. And now and again, and a nice big quality roach, and a few little roach mixed in. But I don't think there's much I can do at the minute to 
Let me cast it. Don't think there's much I can do to um, get any quality fish. But the difference between today and last, last time I fished it is immense. But if I look opposite, I've seen Mark, Mark's catching an odd fish short. So there's obviously fishing a lot better because that's what I drew last time and it was really tough. Oh, hello. That'll do. That feels like a perch, that. Definitely the biggest fish I've hooked so far. Yeah, nice perch, that'll do. Don't mind that. Getting on for a 14 ounces, I reckon. Look at him. Oh, he's, oh, he's got angry, he's got his fin up. I was, I was hoping it was going to be a skimmer, to be honest. Because that, like, you know, that's what I want. Get a few skimmers mixed in. There's been a few skimmers caught already. I think the guy to my right's definitely had two or three. But like I said, you do make your own luck at this fishing. I'm just going to keep them other lines, even down that edge, chucking a few casters in. Casters are, you know, because of the fishing's better. There you go. So I'm just trying not to throw all the time there. That's what I'm trying to do in my, in my head at the minute is, do I throw in like 50, 60 casters and then leave it for a bit? And every venue's slightly different. I can't really, unless you know the venue so well, been to venues where you keep throwing and you don't get no bites and you stop and you start getting bites and you think well what are they doing that's something you've got to try and work out so I'm not going to feed again just dropping that bulk straight down I've got two rigs set up basically I can fish them two rigs virtually everywhere in my peg apart from up the shelf I've got one strung out 4b14 chanty and I've got a 4b16 F1 maggot, just a bulk, two tens, and at the moment just on the 4B16, so the, the strung out one is, well, it's not really, not really positive enough for home fishing. I'm trying to get down on the bottom, trying to catch some quality. Roach. Lovely fishing. That's what we want. So I've got to make a decision now, you know, do I do I feed or do I go back out? I'm just gonna go back out, try and catch one more. And you can use sometimes you can use you can use numbers. You can catch like five fish, feed. Or you can like try and time it. There's no set pattern as such. I think a lot of some people think there's a set pattern to fishing, but there's not. You normally come up with some sort of a, a, a system as you go along. So I'm just going to feed those short lines again. Not many. On the drop bite, little reach. But starting to feel like I'm starting to feel now like it's sort of coming together a little bit. That's the nice thing. Probably a little bit off the pace at the start. Possibly. But I always feel like that. Unless I'm getting one every single cast. <laughs> I always feel like I'm off the pace. So just gonna leave it just to just drop it in again and not feed and see. It might it, I don't know, it, like that, you know what I mean? Not feeding. So 
Mad. Beautiful fishing, eh? Can probably see a it's a lot colour, lot more colour than what it was every week when I come. You can probably tell by the roots that they're sort of anemic. They're quite white, which means there's a lot more colour in the water. And here around this Topper Topper Manor, a lot of the lakes are grey. Even on the sort of carp complex side of it, they're all the same colour. If it went clear, them roach would be a dark, it'd be silver with like big orange fins. Let's just have another go at that, not feed again. I've got to feed in a minute. Feels like if I don't. But obviously I have put some ground bait in there and some chop worm. I've ripped my mix up. I've got chop worm, I've put some casters in it. A little bit more ground bait. That's the one. So I'll try and catch one more, I think, and I'll feed again. But obviously that 30 meter line, I want to probably have a little fish. That was just on the drop. They're all right though, they're nice. They're what I call dumpies. They're all right. If you were catching them on a river or a canal, you'd be absolutely loving life. I would like to catch like that on a top kit in one, but I have tried it and no, nothing. So I'm going to feed again now. So I'm going to feed like probably 40 casters there and another 40 or 50, see what happens. So I want to try and top up with a little ball as well, because I'm just thinking skimmers, that's what I'm thinking, you know. I'd love to catch some skimmers on that, which is going to give me a chance of framing, maybe even winning. I don't think if I don't catch skimmers today, I don't think you're going to win. I think you're going to want some skimmers mixed in with your roach, possibly, unless someone's on an absolute nest full of roach. The matches I fished here last time, John had some matches on there. I won the first match with something like 39 pound, I think it was, and I caught quite a few skimmers. But the, even that day, the roach were really weird. They wouldn't settle properly. And then the second match, I, uh, I think I come third with a big 20 of what I can remember. So the matches I fished, um, they haven't been won with like huge weights of silvers. You know, 30 pound of silvers is mega anyway. I'm just going to get some more worms going in my pot. I haven't bought a massive amount of worms today. So that feeding, I've not had a, well, not caught a fish since I fed. You know, is that because I left it a bit late? Or is it because I've had a run of fish? This is, this is what happens on this lake, it's proper strange. You know, possibility of it could be a big skimmer in me peg or another big perch. And that's why you can't forget about these other lines because you need them if it fishes like this. Other people might be getting a bite of chuck there, but your peg not, might not allow that to happen. So you've got a, you know, there's a little tiny, tiny little indication then. A little hybrid. There's always the chance of topping it up and going straight on it, which I'll probably try in a minute. Because if it's fishing that well, sometimes it feels like you're actually wasting, wasting your ground bait. I'll make another little ball up. Tiny. It's just going to feed a little ball. Nice one. Oh, salt. Yeah, I know. That's what happens when a small roach comes off normally. Well done. At least you've got some on the camera. Positive, be handy. I'm going to put another little sloppy ball in.
I'm just going to come slightly short because a lot of them casters are landing slightly short of me float. So I'm just going to try and drop in there. Just going to whip a joint off. And just have a look while I'm waiting for that ground bait just to I've got to throw a few casters on that. Well, just um, just come short again, and um, with casters. And when I come short last time, I was filming was not good at all. But I thought I'd just put an odd little tiny hard ball in, just soggy little ball with a bit of worm, bit of caster, and I've had some better sized roach. Just chucking like a few casters over the top. But no, it's no, but I've lost, I've pulled out of one fish. I think it was another decent perch, which is a bit of a shame. It's not black, but it's it's all right. I've had a few better ones. I had one about eight ounces, probably 10 minutes before we started filming again. Um, there's definitely fish there, but they're not, it's just not queuing up. Um... I've heard the guy to my right, he's fishing a waggler, believe it or not, fair play to him. And he's actually had a bream, three pound, I heard him say, and a couple of big skimmers. So, um, definitely behind him, I think. Uh, but I'm just trying to, like, trying to find an area where I can get a better fish. And obviously I wanted to try and catch short. One for numbers and two for obviously trying to catch a bit more quality, but mm, they just ain't they just ain't settling. All of a sudden they settle, and then all of a sudden they're gone. Well, not gone, but they're not the fish that you need. And I've just got a little four B twelve. Basically, it's the same rig I'm fishing down the edge. I've come back a joint, so I'm fishing a top getting one on top of the shelf. And just try until I there's a better one. That was on the drop that. Oh that's a nice roach. That's a lovely roach. Get a few of them. That's a uh, better than a skimmer, that. That's a beautiful roach that, look at him. Another 52 of those and I think we'll be alright, Zolt. I'm trying, Zolt, I am trying, mate. So just flicking that out, just cut back on the casters a little bit. They definitely want that little bit of ground bait though. There's a little indication there. There's a few of those little tinies up in the water, which I don't want them. They're too small. If I had to fish for them, I would, but I'm trying to, you know, trying to catch some better sized fish to boost my weight up. He's definitely catching better to my right, but I don't know how big they are. It's like, where there's just like a nice big ball of ropes there, a bit bigger, I don't know, but, um, yeah, four ounces. Just flick that out again. Few casters on that 10 meter. I've I've put another big ball in at 13 meters, laced with with bait, few worms, few dead maggots, few casters. Thing is on that waggler, he's probably catching better sized fish, I think, but he's not catching as many. So but he has had some skimmers, which is gonna be a big, big bonus today. 100 percent It was the last match I've come. Um, so, but you can only catch what's in front of you, and, um, there we go. That's like four ounces and two fish, see? So he's not catching, obviously, as quick as that. So you're cancelling, you're sort of cancelling out his 
slightly better stamp fish with two of my little ones. Plus I get the old better one. It's just those bonus skimmers that he's had. I'm sure it's gonna make a big, big difference today. But you know, still plenty of time to go. We've got over half a match to go yet. I probably could have done with a few more casters. I bought like a pint, two pints and probably could have done with three today. Just gone again. Just getting another little ball ready. Only a little ball. Sort of a bit, bit, bit bigger than a ball bearing. I'm trying to chuck a hard one in. Just get it down with a few freebies in. And just try and not to get those little mincy roach. You know, if they come in the cloud. Can be an absolute pain. But it's like I said at the start of the film, they've just gone again. Every time I fish this lake, it's been a bit strange. It's like now, I've just got to go back out 10 metres again. Which I'll put a little ball in there. Obviously, still been throwing some casters. Just open it. Um, hopefully, I'll drop in. I think if there's a skimmer in your peg, I don't think, I think them roach are probably just fade away for a bit. I think everybody's catching now. So it's so much better than last match. So just go back at 10 metres a minute. No quality there at the minute. Just put a maggot on. Just try it a minute. It might be a bit quicker. Tiny little bite. Slightly bigger, not a much, probably half an ounce bigger. The thing is with maggots sometimes, they just hang on to it and just feed casters and fish maggot on the hook. You know, it's the sort of thing that I try during the match, unless you know the venue so well. It's nice to catch on casters, but... Definitely not like quick out there. They are there though. You do come back with one most chucks. Oh dear. They are on the small side though. Eh? It's gonna cost me today these size of fish and there's at the moment there's not a lot I feel I can do to do about it. Well, I've just gone out long, fished that 10 metre line and it went dead and I just dropped out, I just dropped out at 13, I put a big ball in there, like a big tangerine laced with casters and a few dead maggots and I've gone in there, I never had a bite and I just said, there's either nothing there to dissolve or there might be a skimmer there and it's gone under, I've looked a skimmer, which is brilliant news to believe you me, this is what I need, it's a nice fish as well that. That'll do. These are going to make the difference. He's two pound, I would have thought. Look at that. I like that. I like that all over. Well, thank you, Zolt. You are you are in a funny. He's in a funny mood today, today ladies and gentlemen. He's giving me some right grief. And everybody says to me, oh, you don't want to give, um, you give Zolt some grief, don't you, Des? And I'm like, yeah, you don't see all the other bits that I get from him. So, uh, anyway, let's not talk about him. Thank you, Zolt. So that was on a single, single maggot, a dead maggot. Like I said, I did put a big ball in there probably 40 minutes ago. So I'm just going to go back out. 
And that's funny because I went out there and it just sat there. And I did say to you in my last bit of filming, that's probably what would happen if a big fish come in the peg. It might be the case that I've got to top it up. Because if some places you go to, you've got to top up. You go in, get one. And you might have to talk. I'm going to give it a bit of time. There we go. Another one. Brilliant. Mega. Beautiful. That's what I need. I need this to try and, you know, obviously I'm trying to sort of frame in the match for you guys. It just proves a point, doesn't it, that you've gone out there, no bites. Even those roach have fade away if them skimmers are moved in. So that last ball I put out there was like really rich. I put a nice big handful of dead maggots in, a handful of casters, a few chop worm, a bit of guano if you like. Oh yeah, oh yes. I'll take that any day of the week. A little bit happier now. A beautiful fish that. Not only is Tobber Manor great for carp, it's also great for silvers as well. It's not it's got everything going for it, hasn't it? Look at that, fresh as a daisy then. <laughs> Well done, Desmond. <laughs> hey, thank you. Oh no. So just me normal shot, um, typical shot in pattern. I've got a bulk of number nines, two number 10 droppers, six inch up length, nothing special. And that's what my fishing's, tr you know, most of my fishing is all about. So single maggot. Could put double on, but I've had them two on single, so... All right, let's get back out. Straight down the plug hole. This is where you've got to, like, you know, obviously, try and feed these other two lines, keep them going. That was a terrible throw short. So what's in my mind now, if that goes under now, obviously, if I start catching roach again, I'll probably end up topping up immediately. Yeah, I've just seen a guy two down catch a skimmer, so looking at it, there's a few skimmers. I know my mate Scott's down, he's on peg six, I'm on peg three. He's probably four pegs down, because there is an empty peg or two, um, and he's had a few skimmers. Oh. Yes, that's what we want, mate. That went off like a that went off like a carp, then. Had a tiny little indication. I left it. A lot of those. There's obviously, a few there. fish that not as big as ever two I don't think <sighs> you might have to edit this out Zolt nope. Jesus that's gonna be costly mate not yeah I will do when the camera's off gutted absolutely gutted that was a, that was the same size fish actually Absolutely gutted. What a nightmare. Definitely 100% in the mouth. Ah. What a nightmare. Oh, gutted. Absolutely. I mean, them, them fish are, are, are bonuses. There's no doubt about it. Massive loss, that is. Gutted. But the last two I had were like, 
I've had to use the disgorge on them, so it might have been a bit sort of possibly down his throat a little bit. I think that's a lift bite. Yeah. That's a skimmer, not a big one, but it's a skimmer. Oh, still a decent size though. Didn't think it was that big, to be honest. Come on, should have probably set up my four metre landing net today. Because you're sort of set off the water a little bit. Look at that, probably a pound and a quarter. So, so sort of, can't really tell you why I've done it. I just thought that long line, I need to like fill it in, not fill it in, but put quite a lot of particles in. this going keep everything going because and I might to be honest I might even attack that short line that 10 meter line a little bit more aggressive as well when I top up there's another lift bite oh hello baby The old super crush green. We sort of found that ground bait about, <laughs> it's been out forever, but honestly, since I've been putting it in, I've caught an awful lot of skimmers. So all I'm thinking about now is concentrating on what I'm doing, how I'm going to top that up. And I ain't going to top up with just a little ball. It will be a tangerine with quite a lot of dead maggot in it and some casters and a little bit of worm. Anything you'd like to say, Salt? Um, salt? <laughs> Coaching uncoachable. I don't honestly think I could actually sit here and you coach me. I, I, I honestly think I would be in a prison. I'm not, and I don't mean that nastily. I think I would absolutely lose the plot. You'd loved it. It'd be very difficult, Ozolt, because it's, it's for coaching someone on this with a, with a lot of those roach about. I think that long line, you could coach me. And you've seen what I've done. Well, I think you've seen me, what I've done. Ladies and gentlemen, he doesn't always see what I've done. So I don't know why I said that. Yeah, even though I've even though the weird thing is, I know I'm fishing at 13. The weird thing is that's been my most aggressive line I fed at the start. Oh god, look at that. That's proper. That's a good fish, that. Go on around his fin at the moment. Well, at the moment, I'm coming, definitely coming back. 
doing the Terminator's ult. Beautiful. This is me all over. That's why I get out of bed to go fishing. Believe you me, ladies and gentlemen. Now what I'd have done, if, that, if I'd have gone out there and it would have still been roach, I would have put another big ball in or even two. That's what I, you know, that's what I would have done. Now, if I get one more out here, I'm going to put a bigger ball in at 10 metres because they might, I might be able to even catch them at 10 metres. Maybe, I don't know. But that's what I'm thinking. The last three fish have actually been little lift bites. So they've obviously gone down, took the hook bait, and probably just, you know, sat there with the hook bait in their mouth. And you get a little lift bite. That one wasn't. The thing is, because I've put those, I mean, my motto with this sort of fishing, I've put like them three big four pots of neat or loose ground bait in. And if you can get them to come over that, they, they, they weren't over it until I've topped up. Feels like a good fish, that. It's a proper one, that. Oh, Zolt. Hungarian bream. Beautiful, that. That's three pound, I reckon. Look at that, ladies and... Oh, I'm in heaven. I think we might be having a Mackey D's on the way home as a whole. Yeah, right, let me... Let, right, what I'm going to do now... I know it's a... You might think this is crazy, just stopping for just a minute or two. But I am going to get... That mix, a few more dead maggots. I've got a little bit of worm left in there anyway. A bit of water. And I'm gonna put a bigger ball in. So a big ball like that. Let's not mess about at 10 meters. I'm going to take the sections off. Get that into them. Now, wherever they come in or not, I don't know, but... Amazing, isn't it? Single maggot. Got some lovely big dead maggots. So at the moment, I'm thinking I've got a chance of well, framing, maybe winning. Still gutted about the fish I lost. That's me all over. Oh. I always think about the ones I've lost, not the ones I've caught. So I got a piece of line. Just talk about the rig a bit. 4B16, F1 maggot, dotted nicely. And the piece of line I got between the elastic and the float is the same width, basically, as my foot plate. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's in, that's a roach knife. Now this is where it might. You never know, you never know what's gonna happen now. I've just come on me, it went, I've never caught another one after the one, the last one you've seen, the last skim you've seen me catch. I went out, sat there for like 10 minutes without a bite, so I've put another big ball in. And I've come back to 10 metres, caught a few roach. And I did put a, a reasonable ball in on that line as well. 
and I went back out, obviously just sat on my long line to see if I can get anyone, but nothing. So this is my first drop after 10 minutes of fishing at 10 meters. And I'm hoping that they possibly could have come back, but who knows? I've not had a bite yet, so that's a, that's a positive in a way. Um, so I'm just hoping that um, topping up, they'll come back, but you never know. They might have just been coming me peg, add a few, and then, because it's pretty hectic, that, that, that sort of half an hour, 20 minutes was mega. See my just see my ground bait activate a little bit then. Which normally gives you a an idea that there's some on your ground bait and what that is, who knows? Oh, as a little little Tiny indication then. Don't think it was a bite, it was a liner, I think. It's like someone just flicked the line. There we go. Definitely one there. Definitely not the biggest skimmer, it might be a big roach. I think it's a smaller skimmer that. Oh, I'll tell you what, it's not that small. Cool, that didn't fight very well, did it, for that size fish? Nice. Just what I wanted, one of them. <clears throat> In beautiful condition, that. Pounded a bit. A lot of ropes, that. Get a nice big juicy red dead maggot. You could just sense there was one there then. Tiny little indication. A little bit of pinging come off the ground bait. No bubbles, just see it activating. That's what's so nice when you put that little bit of so natural ground bait in. It definitely pings off a little bit because it's got a bit of hemp and stuff in it. Oh, look at that. Oh, that was a roach. It's a massive lift bite. It was a roach. Eh? The whole, whole body come out of the water then. Yeah, there's a roach. You've got to watch that as well. You get a twist up. Where a roach has had the, had the maggot in its mouth. And you see it, it's all like double up then. How long we got to go, um, Zolt? Two hours. Two hours to go? Yeah. now. So we've got two hours to go. So I'm just at the moment, just trying to sort of, obviously I'm, I'm Oh, it's lovely out there to catch them skimmers. But I've also got to not to try and fall in the trap of sitting there maybe too long when I know I can catch them roach at 10. I've not hooked a skimmer at 10 metres. But I bet, I bet there's a few skimmers coming out now. I know the guy, there's three pegs to my right because there's a spare peg but, um, between the next angler and then him. He's had a, definitely had a couple of skimmers long, but he's now fishing for roach again. There we go. I've just had another nice little run after topping that up. I've just put a free, well, I've had, I think I've had two 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 and a half three pound fish and a couple of skimmers just caught a roach out long 
Obviously this could change. This could change any time. At the moment, um, Robbie, who uh, lives locally, he's been walking about and he said that Scott's up to my right. He's had admitting to 18 pounds. He's had some skimmers and I know he has a lot of roach at the start, but I must admit, I've had a good run. I reckon I've probably had 15, 15, 18 pound of bream and skimmers. And obviously I've had a, probably six or eight pound of roach short. So I reckon I've got 25 pound at the moment, but I've just had my first roach out long. But I'm just gonna stay with it at the moment. I'm not gonna be afraid to top up, that's for certain. Obviously some skimmers have moved into the area, moved into me, over me bait. And I know the guy to my right's had a couple of skimmers earlier, so it gave me the confidence, even though I am sort of in the narrowest part, but I've still got a good depth on the pole. I think they might drift, you know, they might drift this way. So at the moment, I'm just concentrating, really concentrating on that long line. It's funny, because when I went back in, I caught one pretty quick, a little one, and I had to wait, and then the next three drops I've caught one, and you'll find that a lot. You go out there and you think, oh, come on, and then you get one, and you get might like get might get three real quick. But this is where it gets a little bit, there's a lift bite. That's a roach choke. I thought that was gonna be a bream then. So that's two roach and two chucks. So in my mind at the moment, I'm thinking, right, they might have just backed off again. It won't be long before I. It might change now. You know, you don't never know. You might. It might just like just fade away, and you might have to just fish for everything. But you, get, you don't know in fishing. I wish I could tell you that, but I can't. I'll just put double maggot on a minute. Still chucking some bait on me ten meters, and still feeding that short line because you never know. I think a lot of people, once they start, maybe have a spell long with bigger fish, they think, oh, that's it now, I'll just concentrate on that. I won't even bother feeding anything else. I mean, lying to me right that I fed it 13. I put some neat worms in, if you remember, and some casters, but I've not even gone on it. It's pointless now. I can't, I need to be concentrating on that and that, and then maybe coming back to 10 metres, filling the gaps in. There's the lift bite. Another skimmer. Just come up like half inch on the bristle. Beautiful fishing. Honestly, it's nice to be on some fish. I must admit, I was panicking earlier. I thought I'm going, I know I'm not get, getting, uh, I was getting a bit of a tune off the guy next to me, to be honest. He was doing brilliant. He's still doing brilliant, he's still catching, but I think I've gone past him now with these skimmers. Pounder. Double maggot as well, that was on. I've got some lovely, big, juicy reds. Nothing like that. When you get them big, dark red maggots from my local shop. You know, that big, juicy red. Something about them. I love... I'm so, like, I hate those pink maggots. It probably means nothing, but when I put like two proper red maggots on, it just feels like you're so confident you're going to catch. Same with casters, me, you know, when I've got good casters. I've got a few worms going in my pot. I'm trying to pick them out. Obviously, chops them up. I've not chopped loads of worms up. I'll probably end up going through probably half a kilo today in total. And that's over like, you know, three lines. So it's not a lot. So going back to what I was saying earlier, like obviously I fed a 13 meter line to my right in the same depth of water as what I'm fishing in front. And I've fed that, but I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna bother with it now. I've not topped it up. I've wanted to see what was gonna happen. If it was gonna be one of those days like two weeks ago, I might have had to have used that line. You know, if it was really tough, but 
I scrapped it off, even though I fed it, I wasted a bit of bait on it, so what? It doesn't matter. I think my ground bait mix has been all right, really. I probably wish I fed a bit more Super Crush Green than what I did with them bream out there. It might have even been worth, which I don't do that often, is making a richer fish meal ground bait up for long. But after the last match I fished here, it was tough. It was really tough. And every fish, you know, catching the roach was really, really important because where I felt, I mean, the skimmers didn't really feed. All the top weights that day were all roach. There was an odd skimmer caught, but most of the weights were all roach. So, and, and, and the skimmers just didn't feed. But today, obviously they've had it. Oh, that might be a liner, I'm not sure. I didn't want to sort of, if I could start again, yeah, I'd probably put, I'd probably put Thatcher's Green in and Super Crush Green out long with no natural ground bait in. I'd have probably put the natural ground bait in on the 10 metre line, but that's hindsight. It's all well and good. You know, you've got to take into consideration how it's been fishing. Oh, a little roach. So I think I'm getting close to topping that up. I think I'll have one more, one more cast. And if I was getting that, a classic example was I fished the weekend on a venue called Loddon. And um, I've done very similar to what I've done today. Not so much bait, admittedly. I did put two big balls of loose in. Uh, two, well, sorry, two big cups of loose. And I went over it and I was getting these tiny, tiny little roach. And I've ended up just fishing with worms. And that's the nice thing about putting a few worms in. If you do catch the wrong fish, then you can fish there with a piece of worm on. And normally, you don't get absolutely hammered by these little tiny roach. There's a few little tiny fish there at the moment. But obviously, that's where we're pending. So I'm just going to have another go, see what happens this, this go. And... Um, if I, don't, if I get another little roach, I'll probably end up topping up. A yeah, little indication, there might be a roach. Them skimmers, when them skimmers have it, it's either a lift bite or you get a little dink and they're, they're on. You ain't missing them. So I'm just going to get a, what I'm waiting for that, a little bit of wetter ground bait. So I've just dampened my ground bait off a little bit. Can't see much being caught opposite, really. Not, not enough. I'm not really taking that much notice. I have a quick glance around. Mark's... Mark's bang opposite me and he's just had a skimmer on the feeder. But it's not really happening. Look at that for a lift bite. That was a roach. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to top that up now. I think that's my signal to, um, to give it another ball. So I'm just going to chop a few worms up, so I've run out of worms. If you put them in a pot like that, all the peat comes to the top and get rid of that. So I don't want them, I don't really want them all black and horrible. Just chop them up. Not, I'm fine, but not like a complete mush. Put a little bit of that in that mix. Give me dead maggots and casters. And make a proper... Well, I say proper. Tangerine. Like that, not too hard. I'll let Zolt just get that on that. So I've got a bit of worm in there, some dead maggots. Quite rich. Probably bigger balls in than what I would do on a lot of venues. I'm going to go back to 10. Right, Rob. Same rig. Just see if I can just nick a few roach. That's where it gets all a bit messy. I'm a bit of a messy angler. A bit like salt, really. Very messy.
I love it when you get everything all messed up anyway. Normally means you've caught a few fish. Just filling the little gaps in now. If I can go back out and catch a couple of skimmers, I've got a chance of winning. But I haven't had a skimmer there. And it's pretty obvious, I think, and you probably agree that where there are skimmers, there ain't many roach. And that long line proves that. It might be because I'm obviously fishing longer that the skimmers won't come in, but it's exactly the same depth. So nice that number six for a match kit and then you can swing them like that. Nice and easy, nice and quick. Got me roller set up all nice. All makes a massive difference. Drop that in. Because obviously put a big ball in there a while ago. Literally, the bigger the bigger the bigger than the balls that I fished out long. Single maggot. You know, I've been fortunate that some bream of bream have moved in and skimmers have moved in, and that's what's made. That's what made me, you know, that's what's made me have a chance of maybe possibly winning in framing. And I did say that earlier, if I don't catch skimmers, I think I'll be struggling to, to win and possibly even framing. It's like now, this time of day, you'd think you'd be in, settled, wallop. They're there, but sometimes they just take that little bit of time to take your up bait. A slightly better one. A little bit too big to swing that one. Don't want to leave that long line too, too long, to be honest. Even though there's ropes to be caught here. And what, what I'd have done, if I'd have gone out long, and I'd have caught roach, I would have probably just kept topping it up with a big ball, going for it if you like, particles, a bit of worm in it, and had a look now and again. And then you go out, I've done it loads of times on venues, you go out and you think, hello, no bites, wallop, skimmer. You know, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. So I've not fished with pellets today, because I, I know for like past experience, there's a lot of roach in here, um, yeah, maybe it's a mistake not to put a pert line in. Perhaps I should have pert line. You can't do everything. And I don't know the venue, so it's, it's a difficult one. And the matches I have fished here, there's not been loads and loads of small skimmers. The skimmers that I've seen caught are decent fish. If anything, they're like, you know, like sweet corn fish, really. So I'm just going to keep going on that for just a few more minutes and I'll go back out long again. Just looking out, obviously when you first put that board in, you'll see a bit of, you'll see it activating for a little bit. You see all the little bits of crumb and that coming off it, all shingering, uh, shingering on the top. Shingering, is that, all? Is that the right word? <laughs> um, and I'll let that settle and then it sort of dies off and then if there's anything over it, I get the odd little bit of like oil coming from the inside as well. So I know them roach are on the deck. They're, they're on that ground bait. Lovely fish, you know. Slightly better one. 
try and swing that one if I can. Oh dear. Critical that one. Let's have a quick look. So we've got over, just over an hour. So it's still actually got an hour to go, really. Time's gone. The first hour went like really, really quickly, and every sort of the time stopped since. Hour and hour and no hour, just over an hour, and hour and twenty. Actually, getting nice this now. I think just putting that bigger ball in there as well with a little bit, you know, more gear in it, more caster, more maggots. Is these have sort of settled. You know, perhaps I've been a bit negative, but obviously at the start it's hard because of like your previous match here, and the conditions were. I know that we had a bit of a freeze up, but it was similar conditions. I mean, the water was obviously a lot colder. Definitely needed three points of casters today. I brought two points, and I think you needed three. Probably should have fed this a little bit heavier. Ten minutes to go now, and um, it's definitely changed. I've had none of those bigger sort of skimmers. I've had a few of those pound fish, 14 ounce fish, on the long pole, um, and I've just topped up. Don't think I'm going to win it. I think Scott, who's like on peg six, I think or six or seven, something like that. I've, I've been told he's had like 15. Oh, here's one. Now I've just topped up and gone straight on it. But they are a different stamp. I'm gonna get this one in, because there's literally seven or eight minutes to go. It's been awesome fishing, I'm not gonna lie, it's been brilliant. Uh, the 10 meter line has been good for roach. I've had two little sort of eight ounce skimmers on it, but no quality, like I'm catching long. Um, whatever happens today, yeah, them ones, silver bream. They're the ones that are uh, I've getting a few of now. You know, beautiful. Look at them. Um, topping up, going straight on it. And I know they're there because I'm not getting bitted out. I'm not getting roached to death. I get an odd roach. So because I've got like eight minutes to go, I've got to make a decision. I'm going to put another ball in and trying to keep me maybe into sort of get me in the frame because I know down there in you know in hindsight I think I've done I think I've done all right from where I've been because I've had the narrowest peg really even though it's like you know you don't never know um, but I've put probably a good kilo and a half of ground bait in throughout the day so that just tells you what I've fed I know I've fed like two or three lines um, single maggot's been the best bait out there. It's crazy. I'll put double on and I don't know, it just seems to sit there, but double, single maggot, single dead maggot on a 16, 09 or 010. Go straight on. I've just had two, two of those ones that you just seen me have then. But I think Scott down there has had, I did speak to him on the phone, he says he's had 15 bream. What 15 bream's going to go? 40 pound, I should think he's going to end up with 40 or 50 pound, I would say, as it, at a guess. And then I know, um, I can see a little bit down to my right. There's a guy, three pegs down, he's had some, some better sort of two pounders. Whether it's enough to beat me, I don't know. Um, I think the opposite banks fish quite difficult. 
Um, so I've been lucky enough that I think the toes probably go in the same way as the wind over there. On this side, the wind is trying to creep through against the wind. And like I've said in a lot of my videos, it's a big help. You can just let it fish itself. Um, I don't really know. Who knows? Who knows what's going to happen? I don't really know. I had that real good spell of the bigger ones, but they did fade away and I'm sure I've got skimmers in my peg, but it's them smaller ones and I've got to be patient. But I've sort of just sacked the, I'm just trying to catch some better fish to, it's a tricky one because I know I can catch roach at 10 meters. They're not the great, they're not, they're not huge, but they're nice little weight builders. But I think with what I've caught quality wise out there, I'm just hoping that it's gonna, you know, obviously I'd love to win the match, but whatever happens, I'll hopefully get in the frame. Um, and I've had a mega day's fishing. And I think from, like I said, from where I've been, I didn't really fancy it that much this morning because I think you want to be in the gaps between the islands. I mean, it just looks lovely. Um, but you never know, it's fishing. And to be honest, I've been lucky enough to, for some bream and skimmers to rock up on the long pole. And like earlier in the match, I was like, well, I'm going to go nowhere because I knew there were some skimmers coming out or some bream. And luckily they've, they've come into me peg, I've caught them. I've lost two, which is really disappointing, obviously, because I hate losing fish. I've lost one two pound and I lost one at the net about a pound, which, you know, in the big picture of things, I don't think it's going to cost me anyway, but I always like getting every one out. But I've just topped this up now. Uh, and I've been topping up with like quite a lot of dead maggots in my mix, um, casters, and just a little bit of worm. And it's weird that I've gone out there on worm and I've not caught a single skimmer on it. I've not persevered with it, admittedly. But the best hook bait out there has been maggots. And um, I'm sure there's one in my peg now because I've not had a bite off of a roach. I did top it up. And uh, yeah, I'm sure there's one there. It's just trying to get them to take me up bait. But I bet it's them smaller ones, which can be really frustrating sometimes. So we ain't got, well, we got, we got five minutes to go. So I could do with another one or two if possible, be nice. I'm not going to do anything else now. I've had all sorts of little bites out there, really. A lot of them have been little lifters. It's just been really nice, especially when I've caught long on that on that skimmer line. That's been lovely fishing. The roach fishing has been a bit, I don't know, it just feels like it's frustrating because they won't settle. They're there. But I've had that every time I've been on here. And I'm sure there's, like I said, I'm sure there's skimmers in my peg. I've just flicked it. I've just tried flicking it a little bit past. But every bite I've had really has been smack on where I've fed. Or very close to it. There we go. Oh, it's a roach, I think. I thought that was going to be a skimmer and then it just sailed away. The roach haven't been, they've been lovely fish. I mean, like that. Not all of them have been like that, admittedly, but that's sort of three, three and a bit ounces. You can't, you can't moan at that on a, a winter's day's fishing. No, we don't, so. Um, the rig's been brilliant. The elastic's been absolutely sock on. I just don't think I've caught, well, unfortunately, I just don't think I've had enough to, uh, to win, not with Scott. Scott caught them, he's had a real, I spoke to him on the phone and he was catching big roach as well at the start, short. And that's not happened up here. And the roach, little roach on the drop. But whatever happens, I'm sure that you've um, picked up some nice tips. It's definitely not been a, a strung out rig day. It's not been, maybe on that short, short line, a little strung out rig like I was doing would have maybe caught you some bigger roach. But to be honest, I never felt it was ever gonna do you any good. I mean, if obviously if I would have gone out long and got 
roached out, I'd have just fished for a more match. But I did want to give myself a chance of, of catching skimmers in bream. There's nothing better than catching them fish in the winter. I'm not saying, no, I think a lot of people, they've not caught skimmers. And they've probably got their head down on the roach. Now, whether them roach would beat the bream and skimmer weights, I don't know. I really don't know. You'd be surprised some days. You think, oh, you know, I've gambled to sort of fish for out long in the last hour, just trying to catch these skimmers. One, because I'm enjoying it. And two, I think it's the only way that I can build the weight that I need to, what, possibly frame up, hopefully. Definitely not enough to win, I don't think. They've not been here. They definitely moved. They definitely, they were in my peg, big style at one time, and they just disappeared. But I fed, I fed two pints of casters. Um, I fed probably half a pint to three quarters of a pint of dead maggots. A kilo and a half, well, yeah, a good, a good over a kilo of ground bait, a kilo and a half of dry ground bait I've fed. And probably, probably half a kilo of worms, possibly, maybe a bit less. But there's no bubble, I've not seen a single bubble. Uh, little roach, perhaps there isn't one there, perhaps that's the end of it. Perhaps I've just had those sort of three or four pine fish in that last half an hour. It probably needs resting now, probably a dose of bait going in there again and resting, but it's, it's nearly all over now, so. But the art of it is definitely drop that rig in, the bulk. It's one thing you've got to go out and practice. Drop it in, like flick it over, let it all catch up. And I've had quite a lot of those skimmers just as it's sort of all caught up, settled, and gone straight down. A good bite there, that was a roach. Come on, one more before we finish. Literally got minutes or seconds to go, I think. Come on, another three pounder would be not lovely to finish on that. I think that's it, I'm not sure. That's it, all out. That's it. Not the greatest of finishes in the world. <laughs> world. Some, someone, some, some sort of noise in the background. But there you go. We'll have a little, uh, have a little clear up. Get everything cleaned up, and um, we'll see. Let's see what we've caught, and uh, we'll have a little chat afterwards, and uh, tell you the results. See you in a minute. We're on our way home now, just left. Just stopped to get something to eat, a Mackey D's. It, Zolt has kindly bought me. You deserve Thank it. Thank you, Zolt. I deserve it, he reckons, well. Anyway, the results are in. And it's been a brilliant match. Honestly, there's been loads and loads of fish caught. A lot of roach. Everybody, I think, I don't know what the, the average weight must be, 18 pound, I would say. A lot of 17, 18, 19, 20 pounds. Um, yeah, so it's been an absolutely mega day. I've ended up coming second, which I'm well happy with, to be honest, from where I drew. I think um, I really would like to have been in the gaps of the islands, but I've caught some skimmers, as you've obviously seen the video. Um, just talk about the match itself. The only thing I think I probably should have done differently is when I topped up, I should have been topping up with bigger, you know, bigger balls of ground bait with more offerings like dead maggots, casters, a little bit of worm. Um, even for those roads short, I think that would have probably been slightly better. Um, but apart from that, really, 
like I said during the video, when the skimmers were in your peg long, I've only caught two little <clears throat> six ounce skimmers short. Everything else has been long skimmer wise. That 10 meter line's been brilliant for roach. It's one of them lines I've always said, if you do go to a fishery and you're fishing for silvers, and there is a lot of roach about, that 10 meter line can be great. Cause like I have today, I've had the wind off my back, which has helped me out massively. I can loose feed or throw bait. Um, and you can get it around your float nice. Um, and then topping up, topping up long was, uh, maybe in one respect, I've, if I could go back, I would top that long, uh, long line up when I felt there were skimmers in my peg and go straight on it rather than leaving it 10 minutes. But that's easy said and done, but there was lots of roach to be caught. So I sort of filled the gap in, gaps in with the roach. Um, so anyway, well done to Scott Puddy. He's actually won the match with £45. He's had probably 15, I think he said he had 15 big bream, what, bream stroke skimmers. He's had a tench. And I think he said he's had 80 roach. So I've probably had, I don't know how many roach I've had, probably over 100 roach at least, I would say. Um, and then obviously the, the skimmers and that that I've had. Um, and I don't think there was, much else I could have done really. The only thing I could have said, I think the only thing I could have done was maybe topped up on the long line and gone straight on it rather than leaving it. Perhaps when they were there, I might have caught a few more skimmers or them them sort of nice big, sort of nerdy bream, aren't they really, some of them. Uh, but it's been a brilliant day's fishing. I think 24 pound was third. That was all roach weights. And I think if I wouldn't have caught skimmers, I could have possibly come second or third with roach. I was catching roach really well. I, I possibly could have caught 20 odd pound of roach. <clears throat> but without them skimmers, you're not gonna catch 30 or 40, that's for certain. But the roach are just a bit weird. They don't stay in your peg all the time. They're come and go. <clears throat> uh, and that's why you've got to you know, feed those several lines. But there you go, I've had a great result. Second on the day. It's been great for filming. Zoltz loved it as well. I think he's picked up a few more tips hopefully um, so uh, if we do another coach is uncoachable you'd be even better at it now hopefully so there you go I hope you enjoyed the video don't forget um, to like and subscribe on the Preston YouTube channel for not you know not just watching my videos but all the other consultants videos as well with uh, press innovations and thank you very much for watching the video and uh, see you very soon for the next one